Have you ever wondered how to deal with difficult people without losing your composure and inner peace? In life, we cannot avoid encounters and interactions with people who make us feel stressed, frustrated, or even impatient. At such times, you may feel like you're standing in front of a storm, not knowing how to keep your balance. But imagine a world where such situations do not distract your mind or diminish your spirit. A world where you can maintain calm, compassion, and patience, even in the most challenging circumstances. This is the world that Stoic philosophy and the teachings of Marcus Aurelius can bring to us. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest emperors and philosophers of ancient Rome, left us invaluable lessons on facing difficulties and maintaining inner peace through his writings filled with wisdom and tranquility. We can find powerful tools to deal with difficult people in our daily lives. Today, we will explore five stoic ways to deal with difficult people based on the philosophy of Marcus Aurelius. These methods not only help us improve our relationships with others, but also help us develop ourselves, leading a more balanced and meaningful life. Leave a comment if you are ready for this journey and join us as we embark on this transformative journey, turning every challenge into an opportunity, every failure into a new step forward on the path to a life full of peace and achievement. 1. Clarify your expectations. Have you ever felt disappointed when someone does not act the way you expected? Perhaps you have experienced this feeling when a close friend, a colleague, or even a family member does not meet the expectations you have set. This often leads to disappointment, conflict, and sometimes a breakdown in the relationship. But have we ever paused to ask ourselves, does that person really understand our expectations, or have we ever asked ourselves, are our expectations truly reasonable and clear? In Stoic philosophy, one of the important principles for maintaining inner peace and harmony in relationships is to clarify your expectations. When we do not clarify our expectations, we easily fall into the trap of disappointment and dissatisfaction. Clarifying expectations is not just about stating what you want. It also involves communicating sincerely and effectively, ensuring that both parties understand and accept those expectations. In Meditations, Marcus Aurelius wrote, Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. This is a reminder that understanding and information are always subjective, and therefore clear communication is extremely important. Consider a simple example in daily life. You expect your colleague to complete their part of the work before the weekend. However, you do not clearly state this and assume they will understand. By the weekend, the work is not completed, and you feel frustrated. But your colleague may not have known that you had that expectation, or they may have had other priorities that you were not aware of. In this situation, the lack of clarity in communication led to unnecessary disappointment and conflict. To illustrate further, we can look at an example from the Bible. Jesus, throughout his life and teaching career, always made his expectations clear to his disciples. When he spoke to them about the importance of love and compassion, he not only spoke with words, but also acted as a role model. Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. This is a clear expectation communicated directly and transparently, helping the disciples understand and follow. Try applying this to your own life. When you want something from someone else, take the time to clearly state what you expect. Make sure that person understands and has the opportunity to discuss or ask questions. This clarity not only helps reduce misunderstandings, but also builds mutual trust and respect. You might ask yourself, does that person really understand what I want? Have I communicated it clearly? Additionally, Marcus Aurelius advises us to control our own expectations to avoid disappointment. He wrote, if you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it. And this you have the power to revoke at any moment. This means that sometimes we need to reassess our own expectations. Are they reasonable? Are we demanding too much from others? 
This control helps us maintain calmness and prevents unrealistic expectations from affecting our mood and relationships. Ultimately, remember that clarifying expectations is part of the process of personal development and improving relationships. When we practice clear communication and control our expectations, we not only become stronger in dealing with difficulties, but also build more sustainable and genuine relationships. As Jesus taught us about love and clarity in communication, and as Marcus Aurelius emphasized the importance of mastering emotions and expectations, we can learn and apply these valuable lessons in our daily lives to find true peace and happiness. 2. Release and move on. Giving up does not mean giving in or shirking responsibility. Instead, giving up means accepting that some factors are beyond our control and focusing on what we can control. It is a release from anxiety, insecurity, and anger when facing difficult situations. Think about the times you've stressed yourself out trying to change something you couldn't control, such as someone else's behavior or unexpected events in life. Did you notice that the stress only made things worse? Marcus Aurelius reminds us that true strength comes from controlling our reactions to events, not from controlling the events themselves. This is especially important when dealing with difficult people. Instead of trying to change them or feeling frustrated by their behavior, we should focus on how we react and manage our emotions. Take a specific example from the life of Jesus. Throughout his teaching and preaching, he faced much opposition, misunderstanding, and even hatred. However, he never tried to control or force others to believe in him. Instead, he focused on conveying his message of love and compassion. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is a great example of relinquishing control and focusing on positive and loving actions. Giving up also relates closely to accepting reality. When we accept reality as it is, we free ourselves from the suffering and fatigue caused by resisting what cannot be changed. This does not mean we become passive, but rather we learn to act within the framework of what is possible. Think about a recent situation where you felt frustrated or disappointed. What caused that feeling? Was it something beyond your control? If so, could you give up the effort to control it and instead focus on your reaction. By changing this approach, you can find peace and reduce stress in your daily life. Giving up can also be a powerful act of faith. Jesus demonstrated this when he said in Matthew 6:34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. He advises us to live in the present and trust in God's providence, not letting worries about the future distract our minds and spirits. To effectively practice giving up, we can ask ourselves the following questions. Is this within my control? If the answer is no, focus on what you can do to improve the situation without letting your mind be obsessed with factors beyond your reach. For example, if you have a neighbor who is always troublesome, Instead of getting angry or trying to change them, focus on how you can minimize interactions or change your perspective on the situation. Another example of relinquishment in Stoic philosophy is the story of Seneca, a famous Stoic philosopher. When Emperor Nero forced him to commit suicide, Seneca accepted his fate calmly and even comforted those around him. He relinquished his fear of death and embraced it as an inevitable part of life. Through this, he demonstrated absolute control over his mind and emotions, a powerful testament to the strength of Stoic philosophy. Relinquishment not only helps us deal with difficult people, but is also the key to opening the door to serenity and happiness. When we let go of negative desires and emotions, we free ourselves from unnecessary burdens and create conditions for the growth of compassion and love. In summary, giving up is not a sign of weakness, but a demonstration of wisdom and inner strength. By recognizing and accepting our limitations, we free ourselves from the burden of the unchangeable and focus on living meaningfully and peacefully. Let the teachings of Marcus Aurelius and Jesus guide you on this journey, helping you find serenity and happiness in every moment of life. So, next time you encounter a difficult person, are you ready to apply this method of giving up? If you are ready, 
Leave a comment to show your determination to change. You will find that your soul is lighter, your mind clearer, and your life much more beautiful. Remember, in every challenge, there is always an opportunity for those who know how to seize it. 3. Recognize our shared humanity. Have you ever wondered why we feel anger and dissatisfaction when dealing with difficult people? Stoic philosophy, with its deep understanding of human nature, offers an approach to help us alleviate these negative emotions. Recognizing our shared humanity. This idea, when ingrained in our minds, paves the way for empathy, tolerance, and harmony in our relationships. Marcus Aurelius always reminded us of the deep connection between all people, that every individual's actions affect the entire community. When we realize that everyone has their own struggles, pains, and mistakes, we can approach them with compassion and understanding. Consider a daily life example. You are dealing with a colleague who constantly criticizes and makes things difficult. The initial reaction might be anger and the desire to retaliate. But pause and ask yourself, what has caused this person to behave this way? Are they also experiencing difficulties and stress in their life? When we put ourselves in others' shoes, recognizing that they too have anxieties and sufferings, it becomes easier to forgive and understand them. Listening to and understanding other circumstances can help us realize that they may be struggling with unseen pains and their behavior might be a manifestation of those pains. Reflect on Jesus' teachings and examples. In the Bible, Jesus encountered many people who were marginalized and misunderstood, such as the tax collector Zacchaeus and the woman caught in adultery. Instead of judging them, Jesus embraced them with love and compassion, recognizing their shared humanity and their intrinsic value as children of God. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is a powerful reminder that we are all connected and that our actions towards others reflect our love and compassion. Recognizing our shared humanity does not mean condoning harmful behavior or ignoring boundaries. Instead, it encourages us to see beyond the surface and understand the deeper reasons behind people's actions. This understanding can lead to constructive dialogue and positive change in relationships. To practice recognizing our shared humanity, we can cultivate empathy and compassion through daily actions. Try actively listening to others without judgment, seeking to understand their perspectives and struggles. You may discover that beneath the surface, there is pain or fear driving their behavior. By acknowledging this common humanity, we create a space for healing and reconciliation. Marcus Aurelius advises us to treat others with kindness and forgiveness, as we would want to be treated. He wrote, When you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, The people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. By recognizing the challenges inherent in human interactions, we can prepare ourselves to respond with patience and empathy. In summary, recognizing our shared humanity is a powerful antidote to anger and resentment when dealing with difficult people. By acknowledging that we all experience pain and struggle, we can cultivate empathy and understanding in our relationships. Let the teachings of Marcus Aurelius and Jesus guide you in embracing compassion and love towards others, creating a harmonious and supportive community. So, the next time you encounter a difficult person, Will you choose to see their humanity? Share your thoughts in the comments and join us on this journey of empathy and understanding. Take initiative. Self-improvement number four. Taking initiative is not just about acting before others do, but also about controlling our reactions to events. Epictetus reminded us that we have the power to choose how we respond to any situation. By proactively managing our emotions and actions, we can maintain calmness and wisdom. Think about a specific situation in daily life. You have a colleague who often frustrates you with their irresponsible work habits. Instead of getting angry and letting the situation affect you, proactively approach and talk to that person. Clearly explain your expectations and listen to their perspective. This not only helps resolve the issue, but also builds a better relationship. Jesus also teaches us about being proactive in our approach to life and relationships with others. 
In Matthew 5.41, he says, If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. This advice encourages us to do more than what is asked of us, demonstrating generosity and willingness to help others. In Stoic philosophy, being proactive does not have to involve grand gestures, but can come from small daily actions. By proactively showing kindness and concern in every little action, we can make a significant difference in our own lives and those of others. In everyday life, proactivity can be manifested in many ways. When faced with a difficult person, instead of reacting immediately, pause and ask yourself, why is this person behaving this way? Are they dealing with something difficult? How can I help them, or at least not let their behavior affect me? These questions help us reassess ourselves and find new ways to proactively address the issue. For example, instead of waiting for others to change, we can proactively change our own perspective and reactions. This self-change often leads to positive changes in our environment. Another way to practice being proactive is to plan and prepare for potentially stressful situations. Every morning upon waking up, consider that today you might encounter envious people, unjust people, deceitful people. But remember, they are also human with their own pains and difficulties. By thinking this way, we won't be surprised or lose our composure when facing difficult situations. Being proactive also means not letting fear and anxiety control our lives. By proactively confronting our fears and anxieties, we can overcome them and live a freer life. This proactive approach to addressing fears helps us become stronger and more confident. Ultimately, remember that being proactive is not just a way to solve problems but a way of life. By being proactive, we demonstrate control and responsibility over our lives. Let the teachings of Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and Jesus guide you on this path. By being proactive in every action and thought, you will find inner peace and the ability to make positive changes in your own life and in the lives of others. Join the conversation in our comments section. We're curious to know what is worrying you. Can you proactively face and resolve it? We look forward to hearing your stories. Before moving on to the final principle, I have a question for you. Have you ever felt jealous of someone else's success? Envy, if left unchecked, can corrode the soul and damage our relationships. Stoic philosophy teaches that to find inner peace and true happiness, we need to learn to overcome envy and focus on self-development. Number 5. Conquer Jealousy Jealousy often stems from unfair and unnecessary comparisons. Ask yourself, why do I feel jealous? Does this envy actually bring any benefit to me? When we stop comparing ourselves to others and focus on self-improvement, we can transform envy into a motivation for growth. Consider an example from the life of Jesus. In Matthew 20 to 116, Jesus tells the parable of the workers in the vineyard. In the story, those who worked from early morning and those who only worked from the afternoon were all paid the same wage. The early workers felt envious and unfairly treated. Jesus used this story to teach that God's kindness and grace are not limited by human envy. He reminds us that everyone receives their own blessings, and we should be grateful and content with what we have instead of being envious of others. A more specific example of overcoming envy can be seen in everyday life. Imagine you have a close friend who has just achieved great success in their career, something you have always dreamed of. Instead of letting envy cloud your friendship, try changing your perspective. Ask yourself, what can I learn from my friend's success? Can I feel happy and proud for my friend? By changing your viewpoint, you not only maintain the relationship but also turn envy into a motivation for self-improvement. Seneca reminded us that envy never brings happiness, it only harms the soul and creates distance between us and others. Instead, we should focus on being grateful for what we have and developing our personal values. An effective way to overcome envy is to practice gratitude. Spend time each day reflecting on and being thankful for the good things in your life. This not only helps you focus on what you have, but also makes you realize that everyone has their own difficulties and challenges. 
Jesus in Luke 6.38 teaches, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. This teaching encourages us to practice gratitude and generosity instead of letting envy dominate. When you feel envious, ask yourself, can I turn this envy into an opportunity to learn and grow? How can I feel content and grateful for what I have? These questions help you change your perspective and focus on self-development. When we concentrate on positive thoughts and avoid unnecessary comparisons, we feel happier and more at peace. Envy has no place in a heart filled with gratitude and love. Ultimately, overcoming envy is not just a personal act, but also a way to build better relationships and a more harmonious society. When we eliminate envy and replace it with gratitude and generosity, we not only find inner peace, but also contribute to creating a loving and supportive community. Let the teachings of Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Seneca, and Jesus guide you on this journey. By overcoming envy and focusing on self-development, you will find true joy and happiness in life. In the challenging journey of life, we inevitably face moments dealing with difficult people and stressful situations. But through the profound teachings of Stoic philosophy and the valuable lessons from Marcus Aurelius, we learn that we do not need to let these challenges distract our minds and weaken our spirits. Remember, peace and happiness do not come from changing others, but from changing how we perceive and react to the world around us. When we apply these Stoic principles to our daily lives, we not only improve our relationships with those around us, but also find peace and contentment within our own souls. Let the teachings of Marcus Aurelius be your guiding light, leading you through life's storms with patience, compassion, and wisdom. By facing every challenge proactively and with kindness, you will not only become a better version of yourself, but also spread the light of peace and happiness to those around you. Begin this journey today and remember that in every step, you can always find guidance and inspiration from the Stoic Masters and from your own steadfast heart. If you like this video, please comment with one. If you didn't, comment with zero so we can timely improve the content to make it better and higher quality. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to spread this philosophy to everyone. Stay tuned for more Stoic lessons displayed at the end of this video. Together, we can make the world a better place.